I'm just baffled. I, I don't know how that's supposed to work. Hey, it's Pete. Welcome back to the workshop. So this week I'm continuing on with the restoration of our antique supersonic rocket ride. And what I want to work on is the bearing at the top of the ride. Now there's actually two bearings up there. There's a ball bearing that holds all the weight of the ride, and that bearing is fine. We don't need to do anything about that. But there's another radial bearing that holds the uh, shaft from moving side to side. That's a bronze bearing. It's just a sleeve bearing, and that's just not something you can go buy off the shelf. We're going to have to make that to fit. And I had a friend who donated some bronze to the cause. This is just a, a raw blank. We're going to have to chuck this up in the lathe and turn the inside diameter, the outside diameter, cut it to length, and then finally prep the top of the ride to push this in place. So that's the project for today. So unless I'm way off base with my calculations, this bearing should be the right size to fit that shaft out there. I'm going to test fit it on the shaft and then we'll start working on the outside diameter. Alright, let's just slide this on here, I'm trying to avoid the greasy part. Well, that fits on there, but I think that actually might be a little too tight for the size of this bearing. I don't know, we'll have to check on that. In any event, it's a good starting point. All right, so this bearing, it needs just a little bit more clearance. I got it back here in the lathe. Hopefully we're gonna get it lined up and take a little bit more out of it. Just gonna go in here and kiss this edge, chamfer it a little bit. That'll make it easier to slip over the shaft. All right, let's go see how it fits. I think that's gonna be a good fit. So while we're making progress, I got one more thing I wanna take care of. I've taken the uh, vise off of the milling machine and I've put this plate on here. This is the top plate of the ride. And this tube here is where the central shaft goes through. Now this is actually sitting upside down. The top surface here is where the uh, bearing goes that the whole weight of the ride rests on. This tube right here though is where we're gonna push that bearing in that we've been making, that uh, bronze bearing gets pushed down into this tube. The inside of this is all chewed up and needs to be cleaned out. So we're gonna get the mill centered up on this and then we're gonna go and uh, clean the inside of this up. I think the little mill drill here is up to the task of doing this job. We're certainly gonna give it a try. All right, I got my center indicator in here and I'm gonna be running this probably a little faster than I would normally like to, but uh, changing the speed on this is really hard. So it is what it is, right? So. This thing is actually rated for up to 800 RPM and we're, we're not even close to that, but it's still faster than I would like it to be. We'll give that a try. I'm going to have to tear into this, uh, investigate this someday, because for some reason, this no longer goes all the way down. Uh, as far as the stop gauge is concerned, we've got another inch to go, but we can't get to it, and I don't know why. Uh, 
this is going to be a problem. We can't move this without disturbing our setting. We really need to run this head horizontally, but then we don't have the depth we need. All right, change of plans. We're going to lower this head, and we're just going to have to eyeball the bore with the boring head. All right, so I've been uh, fooling around with this for a while now, and I'm just baffled. Uh, so I've got my, my boring head here in the mill. If you're not familiar with how these work, you can... Uh, this spins around, takes the boring bar with it. You can adjust it. This whole piece slides in and out, and that allows you to make a progressively bigger hole. And it has two uh, vertical positions where you can put a boring bar in here to uh, drill your holes. But if you want to make an even bigger hole, they have this cross hole here that you can use. I, I don't know how that's supposed to work. These boring bars, with the way that the carbide insert there is cemented to the end of the bar, it's in the wrong orientation. This would work in this orientation. I'd have to run the boring bar in reverse. But the problem with that is, is that this part of the boring bar is screwed onto that part. If you run it in reverse, it's liable to unscrew itself. So you really have to cut in a forward direction, which means the boring bar has to go in that way, uh, which is upside down. I tried to run it that way. The problem I ran into, though, was one of clearance. You don't have backside clearance, and it just it just doesn't work right. It's just, it's very odd that uh, they would sell this. And, and granted, this is not an expensive product. This is a rather inexpensive product, but if they're going to sell it to say that it's supposed to be able to do something, well, it ought to be able to do it. This part of this project has now taken... Uh, way longer than I ever expected it to. This this was supposed to be quick. I, I almost feel like I need to relieve the backside of this. Well, what the heck, I'll do it. All right, I've gone ahead and I've ground a little backside radius on there. Hopefully that'll give me a little bit more clearance going down through the hole. Many hours later. So we are at 4.304. All right, we need to take this down to match that uh, collar we bored out. Well, this is the last step. I'm trying to push it in there. I think that's it. That is going to be a huge improvement. So I'm back up here on the milling machine with the top plate of the Carnival ride. And when I pressed this bearing into the uh, cylinder here, or the sleeve, uh, it caused it to shrink a little bit, and now it no longer fits properly on the shaft of the Carnival ride, and that was to be expected. So now we need to line it up again on the milling machine and go ahead and bore a little bit more out of it. Now I've gone ahead and I've improved my setup since the last time. Rather than trying to use a drill chuck here to hold the uh, centering head, I'm now using a 3 8 inch collet, which holds the, uh, the uh, center indicator up uh, closer to the head. What that's going to allow me to do is to use this to center on the bore and then once I have it centered I can remove this and put the boring head up in there and it's about the same height so I don't have to move the head up and down and disturb my setup so I'm going to be uh, staying on my zero. I've also gone ahead and improved uh, 
the boring head. I've borrowed this one, and this one, uh, the R8 shaft here, is directly connected to the head, so it's not going to unscrew. So let me just say briefly, uh, when I was complaining about the horizontal hole boring capabilities, um, I'm fully aware that I could go out and buy a left-hand tool. I could also grind one from scratch. There's a lot of things I could do. The point I was trying to make was that this was sold as a kit, and they specifically mentioned using the horizontal hull for making bigger holes. So it would seem to me it should come with the things you need to actually do that, which in my mind, it doesn't. Uh, it's been suggested to me that I could weld the head to the shaft because that's all I'm ever going to use it for. Uh, I could do that. I could put a set screw in this to hold it in place. Any of those things can be done. Yes, I understand that. This is a very cheap import, and you get what you pay for. So we're going to get centered up here. I'm going to center up uh, down at the very bottom of the hole, which is where the, the hole pierces this plate. And that's going to allow me to uh, be sure that I am concentric to, to the hole itself and rebore this bearing to match that hole. And that means everything should line up. At least that's the plan. Well, I do believe that that is another part of this project that I can cross off this list. And I'm probably going to have to redo this list in the near future because a few things have changed. And if you want to keep up to date with those changes or any part of this project, click that link to the left and come along for the ride. So that's done. All right. I'll do that.